Hello, Jamie here for another round of yoga. Today we're going to go a little bit more challenging. I find on this journey of mine through, through deep grief in the loss of my son and the um, abuse of alcohol for eight straight months after that, um, and my my new found journey of sobriety and recovery, I'm finding that as I get further down the path, I am I have a desire now for some tougher practices. I, I was super gentle with myself in the beginning, I had to be, and um, yeah, so now I just like to kind of spice it up once in a while, it's like I almost need more, so a little uh, compassionate inquiry with myself, and um, yeah. A little reflection here. So we will be going a little bit more, um, yeah, challenging, a little spicy flow, a little more juicy. I'm going to be using some blocks for a couple of the postures. So if you have them, great. If you don't, that's fine too. And then we will have just a little bit of time at the end for a little compassionate inquiry and uh, really um, I want to start today. Well, let's just let's just sit in hero heroin posture, just sitting on your feet if that's comfortable for you. Whatever comfortable seated position feels good for you to start today. And let's close our eyes. And I want to put my my left hand on my heart and my right hand on my belly. It just feels I don't know. It just feels like what I want today. So I invite you to join me if that feels right for you as well. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to hit my little. Ah, let's just let that sink in and let our theme today be compassion. Starting with ourselves. Really digging deep, digging deep. I know with my trauma, I, I had, um, I, I found my son when he, took his own life after he took his own life and I'm very I'm traumatized and so um, yeah it's th this compassionate inquiry as I go down this road of recovery and grief it's really incredible how much the um, going within it's hard to do but with yoga and meditation it just seems to be uh, getting a little more doable, a little teeny bit at a time. So ah, let's take a deep breath in, breathing in compassion, breathing out, focusing on your breath, inhale, exhale. Mm. Okay. So I think there's a bird or a woodpecker right outside my window. So I'm going to go just kind of knock on that, but maybe grab some water. Keep, um, keep your, go grab your blocks or, um, if you need anything, we'll take just one quick break and I will be right back. Oh, yep. There he is. Hi. <laughs> Okay, getting the spiders under the eaves there. Okay, we're going to start standing today. So I invite you to stand up in Tadasana, mountain, mountain pose, standing up nice and tall with the outside edges of the feet parallel. And lift up all 10 toes and then put them back down if you have 10. I have a gal who takes my class who doesn't have 10 toes. And so I forget sometimes I need to say, just lift up your toes. <laughs> and then put them back down and then from here uh, take both feet and kind of dial them toward one another you're not really moving but you're doing that is isometric contraction to get that nice inner thigh recruitment knees have a nice soft bend as we come up tighten and tone through the core and then moving along up the body as you get to the rib cage, the rib cage is lifted up, but not sticking out. So you're um, really pulling up and the crown is lifted. Shoulders, let's take them up, back and down and palms to the sides. I also like to take my hand in front of my nose 
and then just gently pull my head back a little bit. Like I'm kind of exaggerating, but pull it back a little bit. And it feels a little bit awkward, but just trying to retrain those neck muscles to um, keep the head right over the top, right? Right in the middle. Because we do tend to lean forward a little bit with our um, Western culture sitting and all that jazz, phone, texting, computers. Let's close our eyes here again. And just take a deep breath in and just feel that air moving in into your body that miracle of the breath and we will have um, just a really deep inquiry of compassion through this whole this whole practice today flutter your eyes open take a deep breath in reach up and exhale reach down it's like you're moving through honey or molasses you've got this really nice quality of movement It's like you are being very deliberate in your movement with uh, some specificity, right? Now lift up your toes and put them back down. And let's just rock back and forth a little bit, front and back on those toes and heels. And then let's take this now into just little, just little baby chairs without even really adding your arms yet. Just little baby chairs where your hips go back. Just kind of get a little bit of blood flowing. I know the, um, People in my classes, they say that it helps them to move a little bit before they do the uh, stationary postures, get a little blood flow. All right, stand up tall, take a deep breath and reach up and then exhale down and keep some resistive quality in your movement. Deep breath in, lift, angel wings, exhale down. Let's take that up again, baby back bend, reach up, baby back bend and then exhale And then one more time, deep breath, lift, baby back bend. And let's exhale to a forward fold. And while you're here, you may support above the knees. Or maybe you feel okay to fully fold in half. This is a great place to add the blocks if you like to use them. I just always remind people, try to not sacrifice the upper body Uh, for the lower body. In other words, don't get all um, stiff through your shoulders. Try to be as loose and ragdoll-ish here as you can. What we really want is we want the neck to relax, the head to be heavy. The crown of your head is going towards the ground as best you can. Your knees have a nice compassionate bend in them. Take a deep breath in and slowly root down to rise to the top. And then bring your hands to your heart and then bring your hands to your sides. And let's just do a few knee lifts just to kind of warm up the hip flexors and then do a few heel kicks to warm up the quadriceps. And then let's do a few hula hoops. You're you're going to bring your hips in, out and back and just a few just to kind of warm up the low back, that lumbar spine. Let's reverse and get those hips uh, moving a little bit. And then let's take this to a little shoulder warm up, hands on the shoulders and roll those shoulders. I like to pretend like I'm drawing big circles with my elbows. And release, big circles, tone your core, dial those feet toward one another. And then release, let's take a few reaches up. I like this too because it helps me to open up my sides in kind of a flow before we hold anything for any amount of time. Beautiful, one more. And now let's go to the top of the mat and we'll take a nice deep breath in, lift up, baby back bend, reach, send your hips forward slightly, tighten your booty, exhale forward fold. And then let's take the hands to the ground and step back to hands and knees. And while you're here, uh, the hands are directly below the shoulders, knees below the hips, and kind of puff up between your shoulder blades, tone your abdominals, and let's take some cat cows. Drop the belly, lift the chin. Exhale, tuck. And let's do that again. Deep breath in, lift the belly. I'm sorry, lift the chin, lift the tailbone. Exhale, under. Let's do that two more times. Just Finding as big a cat cow as you can to sort of exaggerate and then deepen it if you can. Pull those shoulder blades down and back and then exhale. 
shoulder blades come away. Excellent. All right, let's take a few body circles. So walk your hands out just slightly and we'll, we'll sit back and then drop over to the right, to the front, and then to the left. And we'll do that one more time in this direction. And let's go to the other direction. It's finding this really big, juicy range of motion and then come back up and let's flip the left palm and just give a little stretch. If that's a little bit too much, you can manually do it here with the other hand. And then switch sides. Our wrists, the finger bones, everything, every part of our body needs and wants attention. So if we can keep these fingers moving uh, while we can uh, try to keep as much mobility in those hands as we can. All right, let's wag our tails. So the way I like to think of this is bring your left shoulder to your left hip or your left hip to your left shoulder, both. They just go towards one another and then other side. So while your right shoulder and your right hip are together, you're stretching your left side and let's just flow with that a few. I really like this one. It feels like it really helps me to open up through my sides before we get rolling and speaking of getting rolling <laughs> let's take the left foot back and push into the ball of your left foot and dig your left heel in and push into that calf to stretch now lift that same foot up your left foot and all we're going to do is take a deep breath in and lift it high and then exhale under three times so inhale expand exhale contract Inhale, expand, extend that leg, lift your chin, lift your heart, exhale, scrunch together. One more. Inhale, lift, exhale, scrunch, and set that knee and take your right foot back, plant the toes in the ball of the foot and push into your right heel, stretching through Achilles tendon, calf, soleus, that lower leg compartment. And then lift that right leg off the floor and lift it up as high as you feel like you can. Take a deep breath and lift it even higher. Exhale, crunch, knee to nose. And then inhale, expand and extend that leg way behind and up. Exhale, crunch. One more. Expand and crunch. And then set your toes and let's take this to down facing dog, lifting up with those hips. I like to walk my first down dog of the day, um, just taking one heel down and then the other. And it's really um, your choice, like a little dancing dog, kind of getting a little kind of fun by taking it side to side a little bit, just kind of opening up and waking up that body. Head is low so that your neck can relax. And let's take a stationary down dog, but first roll up on both balls of the feet, Bend your knees a little more, stick your head, or pull your head down, stick your hips up, and gently take those heels towards the ground and hold. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale. <sighs> Lift your right foot all the way up into the sky. Open up that knee, take it up as high as you can, and then step through between your hands and rise up into warrior one. So we ground down on that left back foot, 45 degree angle, reach those arms up tall. So you're really sending your right knee over your right ankle, reaching the hands so that you're strong and you're powerful. You're a warrior. Hold those arms up. Deep breath, lift, deep breath, inhale. Exhale, bring your hands behind and interlace your fingers and draw the chest forward. Elbows have a slight bend. So your shoulders are coming down. Your fists are trying to push up. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, reach the arms up, straighten the right front leg and draw yourself down into pyramid. So your chest is towards your thigh and you've got this big stretch. Now, if you need to use blocks, one or both, drag your right hip back as best you can and hold that stretch for another breath. Deep breath in. Exhale, bend back into your right knee and push back up to warrior one. Both arms up tall. Take a deep breath in. Exhale back to cactus and bend back. Arc the back. Deep breath in. Exhale. Inhale, reach those arms up and come down to the ground and step back to plank posture, plank pose. 
Inhale, exhale back to down facing dog. And we'll get that other side. So take your left foot all the way up into a tripod three leg dog. Reach it as high as you can. And take a deep breath in. Exhale, step through and draw yourself up to warrior one with powerful arms reaching high. Your left knee is over your left ankle. Reach. One more deep breath here. Exhale and take those hands and put the other thumb on top this time. Pushing down, pulling up. Shoulders push, or I should say shoulders pulling down. Fingers pushing up. Fists. Take a deep breath in here. Straighten that leg and then exhale. Straighten the left leg and then bring yourself down to Parsvottanasana Pyramid. If it's available, drag your left hip back. And remember, these blocks are really nice for some of the moves, especially in the beginning. Try to not lock your knee. Try to keep it straight without locking. Deep breath in. Bend into that left front knee and rise back up to Warrior One. Hold it there. Exhale back to Cactus. And then inhale, plant the hands. Step back to Plank. Hold your Plank. Set your knees, untuck your toes, and then hinge forward a little bit and just let your hips drop. Shoulders holding you up, shoulder blades together. If that's too much for your back, then back off and just come back up with your hips. Hold that if you can, deep breath in. Exhale, come back over those knees and we're getting ready to go down to the ground. So hinge forward, shift forward, lower your body down. And then keep your hands right below your shoulders, plug in your elbows. And then take a deep breath in and peel your forehead and then your chest off the ground, lifting up. Exhale down, one more. Inhale up, lifting up with the muscles and then pushing into the hands at the last. Exhale down and then take yourself up to down facing dog. Hold this one. Stay powerful and strong through your shoulders. And remember to let your neck relax. Get those hips up there. Take a deep breath in. And bring that right foot up as high as it will go. Bend the knee, the right knee. Stack the right hip over the left and circle like you're drawing a circle now with your kneecap. Take your time slow and easy, and we'll reverse that. Go the other direction. And then send that foot way back up into the sky for that tripod. Step through. This time, we're going to go to your crescent lunge. So you've got your heel off the ground in the back. And if that's too tough, you just put that heel right back down and take it to warrior one. Let's send the knee right over the right ankle. Reaching tall, crescent lunge, deep breath. And then exhale to warrior two. Left hand behind, right arm in front. Keeping that knee and ankle right over one another. Hold, deep breath. Your back foot is 45 degrees turned out. Look over your right middle finger. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, side angle. So your right leg across your right thigh, left arm up and over. And take a deep breath in. Exhale, back up to warrior two. Straighten your right front leg. And then tilt your hip down. And let's take Trikonasana. So left arm up, right arm down for triangle. And then if you want to take Utita Trikonasana, you bring your hand down even further. And this is another great one where the block comes in handy if you like. Now, we're getting ready to transition to a half moon. So if you already know a half moon and you want to go there, great, and I'll guide you through that. But if you don't really know, you want to just do a bent knee and a side angle, and um, that's a great option. Otherwise, take your hand or your block out to the right, bend into your right knee, bring that left foot up a few, and then lift the left leg, and you're out on the right angle with your right hand for balance. Maybe you're on your block, and then maybe your left arm is up in the sky over your head. Whatever variation, maybe you take a bind. You get to play. Take a deep breath in, 
bend into your right knee and set that back foot down and bring yourself back to warrior two. Hold that. Flip your right front palm. Inhale and then exhale to reverse warrior. And if you want to take your left, sorry, your right heel off the ground to uh, make it a little more challenging, that's another option. Deep breath. Oh, it feels so good. Cartwheel the hands down to the ground and step back into plank. And we'll go full Chaturanga Dandasana if you like, or you can set knees and go down. So here we go, down to the ground. Come up to the back bend of your choice. Maybe you just do a cobra. Exhale down, and then take it back to down facing dog. Breathe, holding that wonderful posture, strong shoulders. Take that left foot up as high as it will go. Bend your left knee. Stack your left hip over your right. Take two big, slow circles all the way around. And reverse. And then back to tripod. Square off those hips. Look where you're going between those fingers. Set the foot, left foot between the hands and keep your right heel off the ground for crescent lunge on the other side. Find your footing, find your balance, kind of give it a little wobble if you want to. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale, right arm behind, left in front for your warrior two. Squeezing inner thighs together, they're magnetizing together. Take a nice deep breath in and side angle pose. So your left hand left thigh, right arm up and over if that's available. Tighten your booty, spiral your heart to the ceiling. Take a deep breath in. Exhale back to warrior two, and then straighten your left front leg. Tilt down your left hip and take it to triangle. And then Utita Trikonasana if you like a bigger extended triangle. And then Bending into your left knee, bringing your right leg a little closer, left hand out for support to this left and up a little bit, and then try your half moon. So many different things to try. Again, this is where I really love the blocks. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, set your right foot back down, cartwheel the hands back to warrior two, excuse me, and reach powerful arms. Take that left front palm and flip it up, right hand on the back of the right thigh, reverse warrior, and if you like, lift up your left heel. Deep breath. Find your balance and your power. And then cartwheel the hands down to the ground, step back to plank. And then take yourself into child's pose. Take a little break. Sit your feet back. Mm. Stay down there for a couple more really deep breaths. This is a really beautiful opportunity to really see how much you can let go. Letting go of the tension you know, this is like one of the beautiful parts of yoga is this effort and ease, the dichotomy, the, the dark and the light. Integrating, integrating both, having balance, finding that middle way. Let's take two more deep breaths here. Really finding space across your back, your hips. One more time. Hmm. Walk yourself back up. Let's sit on our feet for just a moment if that's available. It can be tough to open up the toe box and the arch. So please feel free to just um, untuck your toes if that's too much. So we'll go through now and we're going to do that again. Add a little more or a little less 
Let me say that again. <laughs> We're going to take a little bit of time out though. Um, in between each posture. So we're going to do more of a flow now. So I hope I say it right. Sometimes I um, hope I cue better than sometimes I think I do. <laughs> um, this time I'm going to try to say it the opposite so that we're on the same side. Um, because I know for me as a yoga student when I watch videos, I really appreciate it when the instructor says the opposite side that she's doing when she's facing, right? When, when she's, or he, when that yoga instructor <laughs> is, is facing, it can be so much easier to follow. So I will do my best, but please forgive me if I don't do it right. All right. Tuck the toes, get ready for down facing dog. Here we go. Deep breath in. Exhale, lift the hips, head down for down facing. Adho Mukha Svanasana. All right, take your left foot all the way up into the air, straighten that knee, and then look where you're going, set that left foot between the hands, rise up, crescent lunge, your right heel is off the ground. Take a nice deep breath in, and let's take it to warrior two, so swing that right arm behind, left arm in front, look over your left fingertips, strong and powerful. Left knee is over the left ankle. Reach, reach, reach away from the core. Deep breath. Exhale, side angle. Left arm over, left thigh, right arm up and over. And spiral your chest towards the ceiling if you can. And if it's too much to look up, look, go ahead and look down. Save the neck, but see if you can spiral your rib cage to the ceiling. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale, back to warrior two, hold that, and then straighten that front left leg, drop your left hip, and take Trikonasana. Left hand on the inside of the calf or all the way down. Right arm up, drag your left hip crease back. Inhale deeply, exhale and bend into your left front knee, pop the right foot up a little closer, ground down out to the right, and side a bit for your half moon, Arda, Arda Chandrasana. Your arm can go straight up to the ceiling or however you like. Take a nice deep breath in, bend down and take yourself to warrior one. Arms both up, reach. And then take yourself to warrior two, reach. Flip your front palm, reverse or regal warrior, maybe lifting, maybe lifting that left heel. Deep breath and cartwheel down. Take yourself to plank and then let's do Chaturanga Dandasana Vinyasa all the way down, lifting up to your back bend, exhaling back down and take, you, taking it to down facing dog. Mm. Let all the blood come rushing in. Right leg all the way up, way up behind you. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, step through and take yourself up to crescent with that left knee right over the left hip. Strong arms, powerful arms to the ceiling. Deep breath in. Exhale to warrior two, right arm in front, left arm behind. Stay strong, deep breath. Exhale, side angle, right leg over right thigh, spiral your heart to the ceiling. Inhale and exhale back to warrior two. And then straighten your front leg and drop your right hip. Take it to Trikonasana. Left arm up, right hand down, deep breath. Exhale. And take yourself into now a Ardha Chandrasana. Bend into your left knee, pop the right foot up a little closer, ground on the left side out and up a little bit. Uh, right side, pardon me. Left arm up, right arm down. Deep breath, 
Maybe look to the side to make it more challenging if you need a little more. Deep breath in. And bend down to warrior one, both arms up. And then warrior two, right arm forward, left arm back. Windmill to the ground, take plank. And then all the way down, vinyasa. All the way down if you can. Maybe you try a an up dog, ordva. Mukha Svanasana. Back to down, down facing dog, adho. Mukha Svanasana. Mm, bend your knees and walk all the way to the top of the mat. And let's hang here in a standing forward fold, Uttanasana. Wherever you are, maybe you're supporting yourself. If you are able to fully let go, let your head relax, grabbing elbows and maybe just pendulum side to side, a little swing side to side. Just let yourself be really loose and free. Find yourself back in the middle and prepare now to take a chair posture. And um, I'm sorry, I changed my mind. We're going to do a half lift first. So take a deep breath in and take half lift. So hands will come to shins or thighs or they'll go to the blocks. And I want you to send your hips behind you, tailbone up behind you. And pull your sternum and heart forward if you can. Really draw the shoulder blades down and back. Separate those collarbones. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale, forward fold. Now chair. Inhale, drop your hips. Rise those arms. You have options here. You can take it up high so it's not as no difficult if you want more you drop your hips and lift your arms palms towards one another take a deep breath in exhale all the way up to tadasana hands to the heart all right inhale reach up deep breath baby back bend exhale forward fold inhale to a half lift Exhale, forward fold, and then inhale, root down to rise to the top. And we'll do that again. Hands to the heart. Inhale, reach up, baby back bend. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to a half lift. Exhale, forward fold, and inhale, root down to rise to the top. Last time, we'll do it one more time, hands to the heart. After this round, we will either step or hop back into a plank. Deep breath and lift up. Reach. Baby back bend. Exhale. Forward fold. Mm. Inhale to a half lift. Pull the sternum forward. Exhale. Set the hands and step or hop back to plank. And then full Chaturanga Dandasana Vinyasa. Maybe you come up to an up dog and then just flip over the tops of the toes to a down facing dog. That's not recommended for everyone. It takes practice and maybe your toes will never like it. So just something to think about. Hold this. Lift up your right foot as high as you can. And then bring that into pigeon by placing your right knee by your right wrist, shin, across the mat as best you can and then sit back a little bit into your royal pigeon now some people this is really tough on their knees and on their hips you can put a block right under your hip if that works holding your pigeon high at first drawing those shoulder blades down collarbones wide and then bring yourself down and just set your head right forehead right on your hands so you can make um kind of a rest for your chin up high or if you're able to cross your arms and use your hands for a pillow arms for a pillow and then i want you to really let go we're going to be here for three deep breaths so really let go see if you can 
sink into the floor. Really open up your back. If your hip is holding you back, see if you can breathe right into your hip. Send your awareness there in your breath. Mm, stretches the external rotators, the outer hip, the pair of, uh, the piriformis and the uh, sciatic nerve is on the outside there. Sometimes you'll feel a nice stretch. And release that. Bring yourself up. Unwind. Hands and knees. And prepare for down dog again. So here we go. Tuck the toes. Deep breath in. Exhale, lifting up. Really find it. Be mindful. And then lift that left foot way the heck up there as high as you can. Open that knee. And then send that pigeon knee to the left. Sorry, left knee to the left hand. Right leg back. Royal pigeon. Maybe you pop up on the uh, fingertips. Pull your shoulders down away from your ears. Maybe even a slight tuck of the chin. Pulling the back of your head back. And then come down gently. Maybe again, you stay up and prop under your chin with your hands. Elbows to the floor. Or maybe you cross the arms over one another and set your forehead down. And then again, the challenge becomes truly letting go while you're in that posture. Some of these deeper stretches are really gnarly and we, um, we certainly don't want to hurt ourselves. So back off if anything's hurting, but if it's just like, Ooh, this is my edge. I found my edge. See how you can just breathe into it and have some patience and some self-compassion. We'll take two more breaths here. Mm. Love those audible exhales. I feel like I get rid of so much stress with those. Mm. All right. Release that. Bring yourself up. And we are going to take it back up. So send your feet back into a plank. And then send yourself up to down facing dog. And in a moment, we'll stay here for a few breaths. We're going to either baby step, step, or hop to the top of the mat. If you're going to hop, you bend your knees a lot and you look where you're going. I always like to look where I'm going anyway if I can. So um, either way, take a deep breath in. Look where you're going. Exhale and maybe hop to the top of the mat. Take some practice. Some people can float. Stay in your, in your uh, standing forward fold for a breath. <sighs> Inhale, root down to rise to the top. And now we are going to try some balance challenges. So hands come right into the heart. And we're going to take tree to a challenging uh, little... Uh, I don't know if I want to call it a routine, but <laughs> um, sequence. Thank you. So what we will do is we will we'll take a tree and then we'll grab our foot and we will go into a modified dancer with one foot in the hand. And then what we will do is we will lean forward and then we'll go to a warrior three with the leg behind and then if that all works and we want to go to airplane and then we'll do air splits and then we'll send the right knee back up into a one-legged tadasana if that works and then if everything's going well we'll take a little twist in our one-legged tadasana so a little bit of balance maybe take a deep breath and audibly just oh, let it go and let's grab a drink if you need a drink of water. I'm going to add a little bit of a little bit of sound for us. Okay. I'm going to face to the side. I think it will look it'll be easier for you to see. So, all right. So standing up nice and tall. Lifting up. Let's say your left heel 
and then kickstand out your left knee and then pull yourself into whichever tree you like. So maybe you're at your calf or maybe you bring your foot into a full tree. And I apologize, I forgot to say, look slightly downward gaze, um, that drishti spot, that focal point, something that's not moving slightly downward. If you're okay with your tree here, that's great. If you want to try to grow your branches and bring your arms up over your head, squeeze, hands come to the heart. Bring those thumbs right to the sternum. Take your right arm up and release your left foot and grab your left foot. Knees are parallel, buoyant and bouncy on that le uh, right knee. And then start to send your heart forward and your knee behind you and up. It's like you're leading with your left inner thigh. Bring yourself to a dancer, modified dancer. Extend your leg behind you, both arms in front. And then airplane both arms out. If it's available, reach down to the floor. Lift your leg up behind you for air splits. And maybe you are comfortable grabbing the back of your leg. Bend into your right front knee, bend your left knee and come up to a one-legged Tadasana. One-legged Tadasana. So you try to put your left toes at your right inner knee. Take your right arm on the outside of your left knee. Swing your left arm behind you and then push your left knee into your right hand. If you need a little more challenge, take your gaze over to the left and around. And then step back into warrior one. Reach the arms tall. Deep breath. And exhale, hands to heart, to dasana. How'd we do? <laughs> Hopefully I said everything right. I know sometimes it's hard to, it's hard to say it correctly for you at home. Sometimes it's easier in person. Okay, here we go. Tighten up your booty. Take a deep breath in. Lift up. Reach. And exhale, hands to the waistline. Lift up your left, sorry, your right knee. Kick stand out. Find your drishti. Pull that foot in for your tree on the other side. And then if you'd like to grow your branches, maybe bring them up. Hands to the heart. Left arm reaches up. Grab your foot, your right foot with your right hand. Bring the knees together first. Push your foot into your hand. Bend into your left knee as you bring your heart down and your right inner thigh up. Extend the right leg behind you. Reach both arms front. Maybe both arms out to the side like a T for your airplane. And then send your hands down. Send your right leg up chest towards the left thigh. Maybe grab the back of the leg even to pull yourself into this. Bend your right knee and then bend into your left knee a little bit as you rise back up one legged Tadasana. Hands to the heart. Step back to warrior one. Reaching up powerful arms, and then step back up to Tadasana. Mm, nice work. All right, we'll go back down. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm sorry. Let's do a wide-legged standing forward fold. So outside edges parallel. Bend a little bit at the knees and then hinge at your hips into a standing forward fold. Hmm. Allow yourself to just hang here. And then take your left hand over to your right ankle and then lift up your right arm for a twist. Deep breath. And switch sides. Right hand walks over to the left ankle. Reach your left arm up. Twisting. 
and then bring that down. Hands plant out in front. Let's turn the toes out, heels in, and bring yourself up to goddess pose. Hands however you like, maybe above your head. Tuck your tailbone a little bit. Squeeze your inner thighs. Deep breath. Exhale. Heel toe your feet together a few times. And then you'll just play with this a little bit. We're going to come down to the ground. If your um, knees don't like this, of course, modify. But I'm trying to do a little yogi squat here. So get your heels as close as they will allow you to get them. Drop your tailbone. See if you can press gently into your knees and rise your heart up. Tuck the chin slightly. Deep breath in. Mm. All right, we're really close to the floor here, so let's just gently set our booty right on the ground. And we are going to prepare for some final postures here. Roll down on your back. Draw the knees right into the chest. Hold nice and tight. Hmm. Set your right foot on the ground and your left ankle across your right knee. And from here, we have a few options. You can just stay right there and open and flare open your left knee. Or you can lift your right foot off the ground and with your muscles just pull at the ankle. Or if you like to grab behind your behind your thigh or in front of your shin on that right side to pull it in. Continue to push your left knee away to open up that stretch. Reclined pigeon. And then release that and we'll switch sides. Right ankle across left knee. Open wide that knee. Hmm. And lift up that foot, left foot off the ground. Keep pushing right knee away. And if it's available, grabbing behind or around the shin on that left side. Let's take a deep breath in, out. Listen to the body. Listen to the rhythm of the breathing. Go ahead and set that down. And let's take both feet to the width of the mat. So you've got feet right on the edges of the mat. And let's lower both knees over to the left and then face over to the right. I like to place the left hand on my belly and then the right arm in a cactus on this one. But feel free to just do what, you, what your body wants right now. Really listen to your body, listening in. Hmm. Let your top leg be heavy. See if you can let go, don't fight it. One more deep breath there. And then drop those, or bring those knees up to the center and drop them gently over to the right. Look left, right hand on the belly, left palm up in cactus. Let both legs be heavy, especially that top leg. Just let it be, let it rest. Don't try to hold it up if you can help it. It's finding the stillness, the breath, the in breath. And the out breath, like ocean waves. And bring, bring those knees back into the center and draw them right into your chest. And if it's available to you, tuck your chin and lift the head and maybe give yourself a little hug. And then bring yourself back down. And we're going to now take our Shavasana. Actually, I meant to do a bridge first. So let's, let's, let's bring ourselves into a bridge. So keep your feet close to your rear end. Lifting your hips up. Tucking your chin a little bit so your neck is nice and flat. Maybe take a bind underneath. Draw the knees toward one another. Tighten your booty. And then gently 
bring yourself back down to the ground and now we will take Shavasana so if your back does not like legs extended you can go knees to the width of your mat and drop them together if you feel okay in Shavasana with your legs extended your arms can go um, to your sides maybe or cactus or a T I've been really liking the um, kind of the snow angel thing where my arms are spread wide and my legs it's kind of nice to change it up once in a while if you feel safe if you feel vulnerable just feel free to bring everything together and so continue breathing I'm going to read a little um, a little bit to us and I want everyone to just relax and continue in your Shavasana and what I will do is I will read a little affirmation and then I'll be completely quiet for the final part of our Shavasana so that you can just let the words really sink in and just be breathed by your beautiful breath and allowing your body to sink into the floor and to soften hmm. this one is called look to the day look to this day for it is life the very life of life in its brief course lie all the realities and truths of existence. The joy of growth, the glory of action, and the splendor of beauty. For yesterday is already a memory, and tomorrow is only a vision. But today, well lived, makes every yesterday a memory of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. So I'm going to be completely quiet for the last minute of our Shavasana. So feel that earth beneath you and see if you can soften something, maybe between your eyebrows, maybe soften your jaw. And I'll see you in one minute. Just breathe. Take a nice deep breath in and out. Wiggle your fingers and toes. Bring a little life back into your body. And as you're ready, draw those knees into the chest. And then Bring yourself over to your side into that fetal position using your bottom arm as a pillow and just hugging your knees up into your chest on your side. It's such a restorative and lovely and beautiful posture. All your blood and um, body fluids are all pooling on that side, whichever side you chose, and just, just feel that and just notice how that feels, the sensations. Hmm. And then bring yourself up to a very comfortable seated position, whichever position feels best for you. Mm. And close your eyes if you like. 
Maybe rest your hands in your lap or on your knees or maybe at your heart. We started today with that compassionate inquiry. I was talking about my journey, my grief journey, and my journey to wholeness and recovery. And, and that's what it is. It's a journey. It's a practice. Every day is different. Some days are certainly easier than others. But here we are showing up on our mat trying, doing our best. Let's place one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. Close your eyes if you like. And really look in, seeing while your eyes are closed, looking within. And really hearing that inner hearing. not only to the sounds that surround you, but to the inside, to your gut. What is your gut saying? Let's place both hands on the heart now. Compassion was where we started today. I really hope today that you take the compassion for yourself first. We put the oxygen mask on ourselves first so that you can take this yoga off the mat into the world and give it out to others who need it. And on the days that you need compassion, don't send much out, maybe pull some in. Maybe those are the days that you stay sort of deep inside yourself. And then when, you're, when your heart is full and you're able to give that compassion out to others, and just know that there are some days when we don't have it. And when we're dealing with grief and recovery, Boy, I know, I'm not, not to say that we aren't compassionate to others and not to say that we um, are selfish, but we're just really self-aware and taking care of ourselves first so that we can help others. Let's bring our hands to our third eye, prayer hands to our third eye, bow our heads in reverie for this practice today. I thank you so much for being here, sending you so much love, so much compassion. And I look forward to seeing you next time on the mat. Thank you so much. Namaste. If you found today's practice helpful, please subscribe so that you're notified of my next video. Thank you.